Hi, welcome to Phase 4's quick video demonstration and explanation of using RFID sensors in spinning and rotating applications. Today, as, for, as an example project, we're going to talk about our NASA UPA space station project where we deployed a number of RFID sensors in the UPA for the uh, NASA International Space Station. Uh, this project ended up winning most innovative use of RFID at the recent uh, RFID Journal Live trade show in 2015. And it's a great example of how RFID sensors can solve unique sensing problems. Uh, in addition, at the end of this video, we're going to use the UPA project to talk just a little bit about our unique development process that we use at Phase 4 to solve challenging sensor problems. So NASA has a unique problem with the space station. They have a number of people on board and those people drink a lot of water. It costs a lot of money to ship water to the space station. A matter of fact, to ship these four pints of water to the International Space Station costs over $40,000. And for that reason, the NASA is very interested in reusing as much water as possible on the space station. So to solve this problem in the space station, NASA wants to reuse or reclaim as much water as possible. Now in space, water floats around, has droplets in air. You can't use a typical water distillation column and how the water is typically purified. So in order to heat up water and vaporize it to purify it, you actually have to put it in a drum and spin it. And that's what this is. This is the urine processing unit, the UPA, that's used in the International Space Station. And the way it works is the treated liquid is, uh, in, is input into the UPA. And right here, this yellow line and this yellow line is a titanium drum that spins. And as that drum spins, as the liquid comes in, the water is pressed against the inside wall of that spinning drum. This is a heating jacket, the purple part. That's what provides the heat for the uh, liquid to evaporate and become purified water again. And in this internal section, they actually pull a vacuum, which allows the water to evaporate at a lower temperature. So we have a complex system going on here. We have this titanium drum on the inside spinning. We have caustic chemicals on the inside, we have a heated jacket on the outside, and in order to optimize the performance of the system, NASA needed a way to tell the temperature on both the inside surface of this drum in four different places and on the outside surface of this drum. That was a huge challenge because the UPA is spinning, it's built within several layers of metal, and uh, they wanted to be able to get the temperature in real time as they were doing experiments at the Marshall Space Flight Center to see what could be done to optimize and to get more pure water out of the UPA. When NASA approached us, we had a really innovative solution to solve this problem. And how we solved the problem is we used one of our miniature UHF RFID battery-free wireless temperature sensors. And we also custom fabricated, our specialty is custom uh, wireless sensor design, a, an antenna very similar to this. And we took four of these UHF RFID battery-free wireless temperature sensors and we mounted four of them on the inside of the drum. We also mounted four of them on the outside of the drum. That gave NASA a really good temperature profile on what was happening on that spinning drum as the drum was being heated and the liquid was flowing through the drum and being purified. In order to read those tags, we took a, an antenna, a reader antenna, an RFID reader antenna very similar to this, and we fished it through some of the holes in the UPA and got it inside the chamber so that we could send radio energy inside of each one of those chambers to read the tags. That allowed a wireless battery-free connection 
that provided ongoing data, reads of every one or two or three seconds um, of these sensors, and all battery free so that the sensors wouldn't have to be uh, replaced or taken apart in order to get the, uh, to, to use the system over and over again. So what we were able to provide is temperature readings on a rotating drum with no slip ring, no batteries in the sensor, a high sampling rate, a very small, low profile sensor, high temperature, completely encapsulated and resistant to the caustic elements, metal mountable, this is a RFID wireless device melted, mounted directly onto a titanium drum, and spinning. Um, the other challenging thing that we had, it was on this outer drum, there was a very small gap between the uh, drum and the heating jacket. And when we placed the sensors, on that drum, the antenna was up in this area. And what we learned and what we leveraged is the fact that UHF RFID energy bounces around inside of medical surfaces, inside of metal, metal surfaces. And so we were actually able to read sensors over here with the antenna from here because the energy would bounce around between the two drums. While the space station project was really fun and interesting, the reality is that most UHF RFID sensors are used in industrial applications. These include things like shafts, motors, gears, bearing, centrifuges, windmill blades, mills, places where you want to monitor a sensor reading, but the object is spinning or moving, and where you don't want to replace the battery because uh, it's difficult to get to, or where you're taking a high sampling rate and a wireless battery, battery powered sensor would drain the battery. The other thing I'll point out too, on a broader perspective, is this project focused on temperature. But with RFID sensors, we can also monitor strain, moisture, voltage, uh, almost anything that you want to monitor, we can tie it to a battery-free wireless RFID sensor that's ideal in a rotating and spinning application. The other thing I wanted to talk about in this video beyond spinning and rotating RFID sensors was just the development process at phase four because this NASA project is a perfect example of that. The way we start every project is what we call a proof of concept project. And that is where we try to spend as little money as possible and as quick and as fast as possible, we prove that we can solve the most challenging um, problems first. So in this case, on the NASA UPA project, the most challenging problem that we identified was trying to read the sensor in this very small gap between the heating jacket and between the spinning titanium drum. Now we didn't want to fabricate a titanium drum and another UPA, so we very quickly and inexpensively built a little replica of this. And we put an antenna feed on the outside of the drum, and we were able to do a number of simple experiments by putting a lid on, running an antenna through that lid, and determining can we read that sensor if the antenna's up here and the sensor's down there. And we were able to do this quickly and inexpensively, and we were able to show NASA that this technology was very viable in this application for a very low dollar amount. Once we proved that, NASA was willing to go to the next step. Once a proof of concept project was completed and our test report was done, and NASA was convinced that we could solve this problem. We went to what we call more of a product phase where we try to develop the, the final sensor. In that uh, phase, we went to a more sophisticated model. This is a, an aluminum replica of the titanium uh, cylinder inside of the UPA unit. And we um, had to meet the requirements for NASA to have a very low profile, smooth, sensor installed so as the water ran through here that this had minimal disturbance of the water. So we practiced, we had this fabricated 
and we practiced and practiced and practiced molding on these sensors on this drum before going to the Marshall Space Flight Center. So that when we went to the Marshall Space Flight Center, within a day, we had these molded four on the inside, four on the outside, and the next day they were up and running and using the system. In summary, UHF RFID sensors are a fantastic way to solve sensing problems in rotating and spinning devices. The NASA UPA project is kind of a fun example of that, but there are hundreds and thousands of applications, industrial applications, where we can sense things on spinning and rotating equipment. We have an article on this webpage down below uh, where you can link to that's a full description of the NASA UPA project. We also have a whole number of other videos and information on our website about UHF RFID sensing. And at any time, please contact us and talk to an expert. We're happy to help you and work, you, work with you to solve your wireless sensing need on spinning and rotating industrial equipment. Thanks again.